All right, let's check this one out. It's cool. Yeah, the the door works a lot better. Cool. Whoa, oh, I like it. It's great. Go get stuff in there, looks around. Just make sure as we continue to polish that every time you move the head that there's some form of connection on that neck. You now if you want to tilt that neck over this way a bit, if there's a way to rotate a bit, there's a tiny bit of involvement in the in the chest. It just feels a little bit like it's cut off at that top joint and then the head just moves around and that's it. It feels very isolated. Like that. And it's a tricky thing because you want to be subtle, you want to be not too cartoony because it's a bit more of a somber moment. But you could experiment with slightly bigger arcs if you track the nose. The nose feels pretty straight and you can do maybe a slight bigger arc. Let's see how far you can push that before it breaks. That's all cool <clears throat> for polished stuff. You know, during things like this, it feels like the door sliding against the fingers. So you can start working on better contact points. So when he starts moving his hand down, there will be a post change in the hand a couple of frames before that, and it's going to be a post change through here. So it's not always in that curled position. It, it feels like this. the fingers would almost intersect with the door at this point. And watch out the hand. You can see this on this elbow. The hand goes back, the whole arm, and then boom, hits a very hard edge here. So it was like a linear key on your hand, on your arm translate. So that's an IK. Same through here, it feels like the whole hand just rotates down, but then the fingers are not compressing against the door. So the shot looks great. So you can start going into these types of details. I think this works a lot better. It's cool. And the hookup is great with the next shot. Yeah, that's great. Shot for something like that, just for polish, just how slowly that thumb goes down for the grip. So it feels a bit slow and even. So you can probably get to there a bit faster. You can start working on offsets so that not all the fingers move at the same time as they curl out there. <clears throat> Sorry, some trucks driving by here. Sorry, this is a temporary setup. So the sound may not be the best in the world, probably one of the worst in the world. Same thing here, finger details. One shot through here, the rotation of the wrist is kind of staying the same. You can probably change some, tilt it towards us and see the top of the hand. And then as it comes down, it flattens back down. Stuff like that, I think you're ready. Take the shot to go into stuff like this, into facial stuff. Cool. Yeah, that's definitely better as well. You know, you've got your separate finger movements and some intersections, but I think in terms of what's going on and what you want to do with it, I think that's great. You start working on your <clears throat> on your transitions. It's like when he when he gets to here and he goes back down, it still feels. And I'm sure you're totally aware of this. I'm just mentioning what I'm seeing again. Um, that he goes down in a very simple arc. You know, as he goes down, there might be a slight rotation in Y. You know, you know any, everybody's either a lefty or a righty, mostly a righty. So there might be some latent something in there, how someone sits down, maybe that he's always used to sit down on his left or right butt cheek, you know, stuff like that. Give it some texture so it's not just a straight down. 
you know, he goes straight down and goes straight down his chest as well. So there could be a bit of a slight adjustment. So once he sits down here, it could be kind of a side rotation on the butt cheeks and twist in the body just to kind of reposition. Nothing huge, but just enough to make it a bit more complex. I don't think you want to do a big impact on the head, but it could be interesting to see how far you can push that as well. So that the head is a bit higher, sits down, there's a little bit of impact on the head. Just for the physicality. Um, it might be too much, but it would be worth exploring, I think. Same thing here, he goes back into, it feels like all the rotation um, joints, you know, the head, the neck and the, and the chest are rotated back in one axis only. So just you can start getting into a bit more complex stuff. Probably involve the chest a bit more. It feels like the chest goes back a bit. I know it's for breathing or just kind of straightening, but kind of following the head a tiny bit. And again, if it's just 10%, it's fine. Just so that you always want to feel that if this, the head goes over there, well, it's going to affect the neck in this way. It's going to affect the chest in this way. It's going to affect the hips. So that will affect this, that will affect this, that will affect this, but obviously it will be diminishing, right? So the strength will fade out of the how much influence is going on here. Stuff like that, you can you can get into it now. <clears throat> but the ideas and the timing and all that, I think it's great. Getting into the the nitty-gritty of all the transitions. Don't forget to involve shoulders as arms are moving. And you can play around with, as he goes this, this is just kind of like that. Is he resting maybe his head a little bit on that on that wrist? So when he goes forward, is there contact? So you will see some pushing of the lip and facial structure here. Is that going to push down the wrist as well? You know, like stuff like that. You can think about how complex you want to make that. Cool. And if that makes a shot a couple frames longer, that's fine too. I mean, at least to me, um, it's all up to you. <clears throat> Alrighty, that's it. Thank you. All right. There's an email. You can sign up. You can start whenever you want. You can submit whatever you want. You get 16 submissions. Either way, a like and subscribe would be awesome. All right. Thank you.